Doctor, uh, I am very thankful for sparing your time. And the topic of today's talk is uh, basics of genome genome editing technology and its application in livestock species. And this is very important topic. And today, uh, in these days, the federal ministry is also giving funding and uh, research grants on this topic, especially UF also won one uh, grant and they have yesterday, I saw the advertisement in genomics postdoc at UF care center. Uh, I will request all the participants, please listen carefully. It is latest and new technology to learn in this field and both this technology can be applied both in uh, animal, even in the uh, plant agriculture side. Uh, I will request uh, uh, Dr. Aisha Riaz, please start your talk. Uh, please check, uh, do you have access for screen sharing? The data center is requested to please give the access to Dr. Aisha Riaz for screen sharing. Madam, after pass hai, uh, screen sharing ki access hai? Yes, sir. Uh, please share your PPT. It's okay now. Thank you very much, sir. I'm really thankful to uh, Dr. Azam, DS, and uh, uh, this is uh, that, that you gave me this opportunity to uh, present here at this forum. Uh, as Dr. Azam told that the, to the topic of this talk is uh, basics of genome editing technology and its application in livestock species. Uh, my talk will be uh, uh, consisted of uh, these few things. In uh, First of all, little, there will be a little bit introduction about is, uh, and, and, and some of the history um, that how gene, gene editing or genome editing it started and what gene editing tools which we can use. And one of those, those tools, which is a CRISPR-Cas9 technique, we will discuss that as well how gene editing will work in livestock and what, the, uh, what are the applications and uh, some of the policy or ethical uh, changes or regulations which we can uh, we can also uh, discuss uh, here as and, and what is the future if we uh, in future how we can use it so um, just a moment i need to It's not working properly, sorry about that. It's okay, madam, please continue. Okay, sir. So uh, biotech technology is actually um, starts from 19th and 20th century. When um, uh, the biotechnology has developed and because we learned about cell theory, we learned about biochemistry, medicine, vaccination, when many more things has been started in the early uh, in 19th and 20th centuries. But the real uh, biotechnology, it started. Why I'm talking about biotechnology here? Because it will then be, uh, later on, it will become uh, or uh, it will turn into genome editing. The, uh, so uh, the, the real biotechnology starts after the uh, DNA sequence has been revealed. The DNA structure has been revealed, then the real biotechnology has been started. And the revolutionary steps which were taken uh, in the early stages of uh, bio, uh, biotechnology, uh, they include, number one is the, um, the DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing by uh, Gilbert and Sanger, which is called as uh, Sanger sequencing technique in 1970. And, uh, and secondly, is the, uh, the Paul Berg who uh, performed experiments on gene splicing in 1971 in Stanford. And in that he, he found out how to insert or how to cut a DNA. So which is, which we sometimes call, which we can call as recombinant DNA. These two techniques, they actually opened uh, the uh, gates 
uh, of uh, uh, the, the manipulation of DNA. And a huge work has been done afterwards on, uh, on DNA te uh, technology. So uh, what has been changed from that time biotechnology along with the advancement in the uh, techniques and technology, it, it becomes genetic engineering then or genetic recombination and later on it is gene editing. So we can say that these are all um, these three things have the same name, but with the uh, with some changes in the technology and techniques. As we know that in the um, in the early years in 1980s and 90s, or we can say that from uh, two to three decades back, we can see there is a huge uh, work has been substantial scientific and technical advancements have been done in human genetics, in uh, um, animal genetics, in, pl in plants as well. The cloned sheep, as we all know that it's a, it's a result of uh, in vitro fertilization, so enzymatic cell nuclear transfer, the genetically modified food, uh, DNA fingerprinting, all these things, they are the, these are the revolutionary steps in the biotechnology. And uh, one is the, which is insulin, which is also called as the uh, golden molecule of uh, the biotech industry. And in this, uh, it is actually the direct result of recombinant DNA technology. Currently, millions of diabetics, diabetic patients, they are using this worldwide. Synthetic insulin is being used uh, worldwide and uh, to regulate the blood sugar levels. And this is made in both bacteria and yeast. This is, a small, this is the timeline um, uh, of uh, what is happening during uh, of the, in the biotechnology. And we can see here that in 2014, the revolutionary step or formation of CRISPR-Cas uh, technology. But uh, before uh, formation of this technology, uh, I will go uh, into the little, a little bit about uh, that how it go to how it went to the this technology. So first of all, what is the gene editing? It is a very simple definition that it is the removal, modification, or addition of a functional element into the genome of a living cell or organism. It, we can also call it genetic engineering. So that's why I told that these are actually the names uh, have, uh, they are the same, just the techniques are different. Gene technology, gene editing, genetic recombination, or uh, genetic engineering, everything is involved in this. So in this, but, but in this technique, there is some, something different. In gene editing, something is different. In early techniques, there, is ran, there are random changes. In genetic engineering or um, in uh, genetic recombination, particularly in the living cell or organism, insertions of plasmid or viruses has been done, but the result occurs in the random changes. There is no target specific or site specific um, targeting. But in case of gene editing, we can use it uh, for the direct changes at the target in the target gene or target location, and we can find uh, do this by and we can get homologous different homologous recombinations. There are different techniques are being used, uh, like uh, in which we have uh, zinc finger talons or and uh, CRISPR. These are called as gene editing tools. Gene editing is not, uh, uh, you can, we cannot say that CRISPR came in 2015, this technique, but this is there. And before that, um, these gene editing tools have been used. It, these actually, uh, these tools have been started in 1990s. In 2015, uh, they actually uh, made four major classes of uh, these uh, tools, but these do, tools were there. These are called as nucleases. Nucleases are actually the um, enzymes which can cut nucleic acid, DNA or RNA. These include mega nucleases, zinc finger nucleases, transcription activator like effector based nucleases, and CRISPR Cas9. CRISPR Cas9, which is the clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeat. And these nucleases, they can create site specific double-stranded break at desired location in the genome. If we see the efficacy of these uh, uh, tools, then the best one is the CRISPR-Cas9 up till now, according to the, uh, on the basis of the research which have been done. 
Meganucleases, zinc finger, zinc, zinc finger nucleases, and talon techniques, they actually require uh, proteins. Uh, and uh, and they also need specific uh, sequences for the uh, proteins and proteins have been uh, they are usually inserted or in, in uh, inoculated into the cell whereas crispr cas9 system is the system in which uh, the cell cell cells genome is uh, is usually uh, target at certain point and we do not need to add any protein into it where because crispr cas9 system Usually, particularly in bacteria, this protein is present, whereas in other species, this uh, CRISPR-Cas9 system can be introduced in the cell. But this system is much efficient, it's uh, less um, expensive, and it, can, it needs less requirements as compared to the other ones. Where is the efficiency? It has been seen that up till now, the efficiency is uh, uh, almost similar, but this, the cost effectiveness, the um, requirements of the material the uh, and the is, uh, to perform this analysis crispr cas9 is the uh, is the best these all techniques they actually produce double strand break in the double stranded uh, in the in the dna we all know that dna is a double stranded molecule and this double strand break is usually occurs uh, um, in the when it occurs in the genome or when it occurs in anywhere in the genome it uh, uh, there there is naturally naturally there the cell can repair it now, when the cell can repair it then um, it, uh, it 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 is repaired by two mechanisms i will discuss this in in later but the main target is the of all these four tools is to cut the dna uh, uh, and or give a double stranded cut into the dna at a specific point so uh, gene editing tools in, uh, in this one the crispr cas9 system which is the considered as the most revolutionary tool and has been developed to carry out highly efficient and specific genome editing as a simple rna guided platform furthermore the crispr cas9 system is simple and practically easy to use with robust cutting activities leading to a fast and cost effective system for modifying genomes of various organisms it is actually based on a simplified version of bacterial crispr cas9 antiviral defense system actually crispr if we see the history of crispr crispr is there from uh, it's it's an ancient system of bacteria bacteria has this system from very from very old time and then and this is present inside the bacterial uh, uh, genome and uh, uh, it is used for uh, by the bacteria as an adaptive immune response bacteria use this system against bacteriophages bacteriophages are the viruses which can kill bacteria which can infect bacteria so uh, this system is present all, uh, always in the bacteria and uh, but this is present in the bacterial cell so how it was discovered? There were three main uh, uh, researches which, uh, which have been uh, done in different parts of the world which discovered this technique. First of all, in uh, a, a Japanese scientist who was working on some other gene, but he, they, uh, mis they uh, mistakenly or uh, by chance they found out that there is a repeat region in the, repeat region mean that one, one uh, sequence of DNA is repeating itself after certain uh, base, basis of uh, certain nucleotide basis se uh, sequence, it is repeating itself. So that's why there is a there is word uh, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. Repeats mean there is a certain region which is repeating itself after some uh, you can say that after some distance, this region is repeating itself. But they ignored this uh, discovery. Later on, a scientist working on particularly on these repeat regions in uh, 2000, and that scientist gave this name to it because he found out that there are many regions which are which have the same sequence, and they are and this sequence is repeating itself. That's why he gave it name clustered, and they are regularly repeating itself, and they are interspaced. Interspaced means that they are actually uh, they have a small space between these. Uh, uh, sequences. Later on, there is a company which make yogurt in 2005 in Spain. 
they they was they were uh, they worked on it and that's why i put this picture here uh, this the yogurt company actually found that there was a uh, strain of uh, the uh, streptococcus thermophilus which can resist uh, which could resist the bacteriophage attack so they worked on that and they found out that these uh, repeat regions there and uh, one of those interspace sequence it has which is we also call the spacer and this one of this spacer region contains the sequence of bacteriophage which means that the the bacteria actually include that region into its genome bacteria included the uh, region of an its enemy uh, of the sequence of its enemy into its genome so that it can transfer this information to its progeny so that it can it is just like that uh, that this is a picture of uh, a the enemy that this is your enemy and you will recognize it with this sequence so the bacteria has this uh, system that they can put the sequence of their enemies into these spacer region every spacer region has a different sequence and it, it means that uh, all these sequences are from the enemies of the bacteria whereas these uh, repeat regions have the same sequences now bacteriophages uh, what happens when bacteriophages infect bac uh, the bacteria they insert their dna in in uh, into the uh, bacterial cell bacterial cell uh, take the small part of the phage gene and insert it into the spacer region and then when this region transcribes when this region forms its messenger rna then one part of the repeat region and, and uh, also the spacer region they transcribe into the crispr rna this crispr rna then uh, along with the gene, uh, protein which is called as called as cas9 protein and this cas9 protein along with this crispr rna uh, moves around into the into the cell and find out that where the phage genes are whenever they find a complementary uh, sequence of the phage gene this cas9 protein which is a very cruel protein it cuts the phage dna and give a double strand break and it means that both of these um, strand of the phage dna they are cut after cas9 act on it and this produce a double strand break which means that uh, that the bacteria uh, bacteriophage now its genome is um, it, it's uh, disrupted and it cannot uh, further transcribed so this double strand break but uh, can also there uh, there is a system in the cell that that uh, there, if there is any damage occurs to the dna then the uh, DNA, uh, it can be repaired this is a natural system naturally uh, at the cells during the cell cycle this can be repaired but this is error prone when there is a double stranded break So, uh, then cell tries to join these two ends but this is sometimes there can be mutation occur one or two one or two bases can be changed and a non functional protein can be formed in this way bacteria disables the bacteriophage but in uh, this was all occurring in the uh, in in vivos within the cell this system was used by then uh manuela charpentier and jennifer dauna who also uh, got the nobel prize on this discovery that what they did that they actually made this system um they they, uh, they actually made this technique to do it inside a test tube inside the lab outside the cell so this crispr cas9 system is technique uh, which we learned from the bacteria we can use it for the other genomes for the other uh, genes and we can you, we can do it, it as in the lab as we perform other experiment just like pcr or just like uh, the other um, analysis so crispr cas9 if we perform it outside the cell and uh, if we perform it in vitro how we can do this uh, this uh, and uh, what results we can get so first of all i'll discuss about how what what will happen when this system works as i have told that this system produce a double strand break and double strand break then can be repaired repaired naturally 
but we can manipulate the, this, these things. As a result of the double strand break, as I told that uh, na cells naturally, they join the system and the cell uh, naturally join the DNA and this DNA, but it has mutation, which means that the gene is now knockout or we, this gene is now disabled. Secondly, we can uh, insert some bases or new, replace new uh, genes here. For that, we also need to add donor DNA. This is a modification in the CRISPR-Cas9 system that along with the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, system, we also add a donor DNA. We can also increase or decrease the expression of the genes. So uh, for, for all these things, we need some uh, cells which can easily be, uh, which, in which we can easily in, inoculate this system. But uh, there are two types of joining. As I have told that this is a natural system of joining of double strand DNA. One is called as the um, non-homologous end joining. This is, as I've told that this is an error-prone error DNA. Most of the time in this, the gene is delete, uh, knocked out. Whereas there is another system in which we have to add a, a donor DNA, then it, it is actually called as homology directed repair or HDR or HR in which uh, instead of joining it by itself, the donor DNA comes in here and then it, it is joined from the both ends to the cut DNA. It's, we call it knock in. In this way, we can in, in, uh, add some gene in, into it or we can uh, insert some sequence into that particular part. After this discovery, this, uh, uh, it has been seen that a huge amount of work has been started on this, uh, uh, using this technique. Even the companies which were, uh, they, were they started making CRISPR uh, kits, CRISPR-Cas9 kits, just like CRISPR in a box or CRISPR uh, nuclease. And you just need to send your uh, sequence, which you need to cut. They will give you the guide RNA, and uh, the guide RNA is the RNA which is uh, uh, the, uh, from the uh, repeat region. And in this way, uh, you can get these from the uh, you can get the these from commercial commercial companies. And then uh, a huge number of work has been done in 2016. Almost 2,000 uh, of the uh, more than 2,000 of papers have been published up till now. Um, it's uh, much the number is very very high. So uh, how it is working in livestock? It is, uh, this is a huge work is done in, uh, in plants because this started, this work is started in bacteria. Uh, later on, a huge work was done in plants, but there also has been some work is done in uh, livestock. But um, conventional gen genetically modified organism, GMOs, they always, always there, is, there was a public concern that uh, foreign gene or uncontrolled random mutations are being, uh, have been in, in, uh, inserted in, in it. Because in case of genetically modified organisms, you have to insert or you have to uh, add the foreign gene or uh, the mutations which are not under control. And there was always public concern about this, the safety issue of the food. Also, there was un, uh, unknown allergen reactions, antibiotic resistant genes, because it has also been used in the plasmid, which we uh, inoculate or insert uh, or uh, um, transfect into the cells. On the other hand, the genome edited chickens or other livestock, they can produce by controlled precise genome editing technology, similar to mutations in intrinsic or uh, natural genomic sequence like natural mutations rather than foreign gene insertion as in conventional GMOs. GMOs. Because uh, in this one, already present gene is usually uh, targeted. There is no uh, outside DNA is inserted until or unless uh, when you give a donor uh, DNA, but we also need to see later on that off-target effects should not be produced. Off-target means undesirable effects, which we don't want. So what is the process? The process is different in chickens, the process is different in uh, animals, but they, the target is actually the 
in in case of uh, chickens, the primordial germ cells, which are uh, very early cells in an uh, embryo, these are usually taken and then they are grown uh, in vitro. And during in vitro culture, the CRISPR system uh, uh, is uh, introduced into these cells. Afterwards, these cells were injected into these primordial germ cells and that embryo then when grows, then uh, with the, now this is a genome edited uh, uh, bird and we, it, it contains that uh, gene which, uh, uh, which was edited using CRISPR technique. In the same way, in case of cattle and other uh, animals, in case of ruminants, uh, again, we need the cells which, uh, which are uh, very at very early stage of the embryo because at that stage, it is easier to insert uh, or to uh, use the CRISPR system. The embryos are usually grown in vitro and then uh, fibroblasts. Actually, this technique is the single, uh, the somatic cell nuclear transfer. There is another technique as well, which can be used. In this one, these fibroblasts are usually taken from a higher trait uh, animal, and these uh, uh, fibroblasts are then selected on the basis of their genotype, and then we can insert the genome added system into uh, inocular genome added system into that. And then later on, we can get it by uh, sequencing that either that's, uh, as the system worked or not. And later on, these uh, fibroblasts, which have desired genetics, and they were uh, then these uh, their nucleus introduced into these donor cells, and then embryo transfers uh, transfer was uh, uh, done, and those animals which came afterwards they have edited genome. There is another system uh, which we can use. One is the using zygote in which the zygote is manipulated using micro uh, injection or micro manipulation and the fibroblast, which I have told that the somatic cell nuclear uh, transfer uh, in which the nuclear uh, nucleus is transferred and embryo transfer occurs after this, uh, uh, this embryo when these, these are, uh, these embryos when a uh, little bit mature, then they are transferred into the animals and then the, uh, the animals which are, uh, formed afterwards, or they they have all these gen uh, different uh, genome edited. Uh, sorry, the edited genome. So different applications can be done. Uh, different there are many different applications of these, uh, this this uh, genome editing technique. As Dr. Azam told earlier, that it's uh, uh, it's a very revolutionary step, and uh, we can do many things in that, like uh, in uh, disease resistant animals, for example. TB, mastitis in cattle and even influenza in animals. Production can be enhanced like myostatin knockout. Uh, I will uh, discuss some of these in uh, next slides. Elimination of allergens, which is a big problem in uh, milk, uh, milk allergens as well as egg allergens, heat tolerance, Therapeutic use is also being uh, done well and for, and for the welfare of animal like hornlessness. These all things can be. Uh, we can use uh, by using this technique. So uh, some of the examples which I can discuss the, in the application of uh, uh, CRISPR technique or uh, genome editing technique. One is the production of uh, the cattle, which has uh, which can resist tuberculosis. TB is a big problem, and uh, but tuberculosis resistant cow they can be developed and they have they, they were developed for the first time using CRISPR, CRISPR technology. In this technique, what they did uh, in this example, what they did that they in they knock in they introduce a, a gene NRAMP1 gene and this gene uh, actually has the resistance potential. This it, when this gene is. Uh, present in, in the genome of uh, cattle, they resist TB. So uh, they, uh, what happens that after the insertion of the genome into the, uh, of this gene into the cow's genome, they, uh, the scientists were able to develop live cows carrying increased resistance to tuberculosis. They did not confirm that this, uh, they, they totally resist or they, they can prevent TB, but they, uh, incre they had increased resistance against tuberculosis. Then another example uh, in chicken, 
is the uh, there is a gene of the chicken cell chickens that ANP32 protein which influenza virus used uh, uses for its own because viruses you know that they are uh, intracellular um, obligatory parasites and they use hosts hosts uh, proteins hosts uh, system so this virus use ANP32 protein and they use uh, the polymerase and then they perform its polymerase activity. But uh, if this ANP32, uh, the cells which lack ANP32 cells, uh, this pr uh, protein, in the, on those cells, even influenza could not replicate. So replication was abrogated in the chicken cells which were lacking ANP32A protein. And then in the same way, there is another example that uh, the, the uh, chicken uh, which uh, were, were developed, which showed resistance again avian leukosis viruses. Avian leukosis virus caused uh, huge economic losses in the, in the poultry, but NHE gene actually, this is a gene of receptor. This, uh, uh, this receptor is present on the cells and on these receptors, chicken, uh, this, uh, sorry, leukosis virus binds. But any uh, change in one amino acid of this, uh, uh, pr uh, the protein of NHE1 gene can cause uh, the stoppage of this virus to bind with the host cell receptor. And in this way, she can resist this uh, virus. Avian retrovirus infection, it also, it's uh, uh, an oncogenic virus, retrovirus and cause uh, many uh, huge losses in the chicken. But there is, this system was developed, it's, uh, not, it was not developed for the embryos, but it was developed for the adult birds. It is just inoculated as a vaccine or into the uh, adult, adult chickens. In this uh, system, it has been seen that even not only uh, bird was, uh, birds, a bird got immunity against avian retroviruses, but also against Marix disease virus. Marix disease, uh, genome was used as a delivery system. And in this genome, the avian retrovirus genome was inserted using Cas9, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technique. And then this whole system was inoculated into, this, into the bird. And bird uh, then it was found out that bird got uh, resistant to this uh, disease. But one thing I just want to clear that all these examples, they are no, uh, not even, I haven't heard that any single example has been yet come into the market. So these are mostly work from the labs or published papers. Then uh, uh, muscle productivity, which is another very huge uh, um, application of this technique. In this one as uh, MSTN, MSTN is a gene which is myostatin gene and it is a negative regulator of the muscles. It doesn't, uh, and in case of uh, when, when they, this gene is disrupted, when MSTN protein is not formed, it has been seen that in animals or in birds, there is more muscle mass. And using CRISPR-Cas9 system, uh, it has been also found that in sheep, there was an increased weight or, uh, has been found and in, in the similarly, in case of chicken, uh, higher mass of uh, muscle mass was found in the, uh, in the skeletal muscles and low abdominal fat was found. Allergen-free food, which is also uh, a huge problem in the world. In case of um, uh, ruminants, in cattle, in goat, it has been seen that uh, in the milk, there is a gene which is called as beta-lactoglobulin, which is usually the, uh, the reason for the allergy and this gene a knockout of this gene using uh, zinc finger nucleases or crispr cas9 system it uh, caused the it made the milk hypoallergenic uh, or less allergenic so uh, it has been seen that in cattle this uh, uh, dna free blg uh, biallelic knockout cow by zinc finger nucleases was produced and produced blg free milk Secondly, in case of in goat, BLG protein had been abolished in the milk of the BLG knockout goats. In uh, chicken, we know that uh, in uh, the eggs, two of the egg uh, proteins, ovalbumin and ovomucoid, they are very efficient and, uh, and they are highly allergenic, and, but they can be uh, mutagenized using CRISPR technology in the primordial germ cells and then 
they can be those those eggs can be produced which do not have or very less quantity of these proteins therapeutic use this is another example application in the, the researchers in the university of edinburgh uh, roslin institute they have genetically modified chickens to which can produce human proteins in their eggs these uh, proteins include uh, uh, csf uh, human interferon and these are uh, these proteins are very important in cell or in uh, in repair system of the cell or into the body so uh, these proteins they are very expensive if we get them directly from the uh, human being or directly from the animal and uh, and they are very they, are, they cannot be grown in in vitro so the eggs they were have been found out, found that this, this is an easy way to uh, get these proteins three eggs can contain a clinically significant dose. And these, uh, they, in the egg white, these proteins are present. And they are actually commercially selling these proteins uh, in this uh, institute. The chicken themselves, they are uh, unaffected by the presence of human proteins in their system. So they, they mentioned that, that the chickens, they are unaffected, but they still can produce human proteins in their system. The last application uh, and very interesting application, it is also it, this kind of similar experiment has also been done in cattle as well. In uh, last year, this experiment was successfully done. That is the, uh, 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 that we can use this technique uh, as a biomarker for uh, male or uh, female animals. Uh, in chicken, we know that uh, most of the male um, chicks, one day old chicks, they have been uh, culled or they usually um, killed by different uh, techniques there because they are not used later on. So how we can avoid this thing? It has been in an experiment, it has been done that uh, in the Z chromosome of uh, the uh, genome, GFP was inserted. GFP is a green fluorescent protein, which under uh, UV, it gives a green fluorescence or green light. And uh, now this progeny, the female of this progeny can uh, be used to, for further. The females of this, because in, in poultry, the females are uh, heterozygous and males are homozygous. Males have, has two Z chromosome, uh, chromosomes and females has W and Z chromosome. In, even the female of uh, with having GFP expressing sets in it uh, and a wild type male with two uh, Z chromosomes when they uh, and their progeny, they will only have the males with green fluorescent uh, uh, protein in the uh, protein gene in them, whereas the females will only have uh, on, they will they will be wild type because W chromosome which will come from the female and Z chromosome will come from the uh, the male. In this way, the the females which will be produced they will they will not have any GFP, whereas the males which will be produced they have GFP and they can be uh, recognized or we, they can be. Uh, we can uh, how we can recognize that this is uh, this contains the GFP or not? It at a very small level when and when embryo is a very small, even fifty to sixty thousand of the cells. Then at that time we can also get the signal of uh, GFP. So in this way we can find out that either this is a male or this is a female. And at that time it this that embryo can be discarded. So uh, there are uh, there are a lot more examples present. There are more lot more applications are present in the uh, of by using these techniques, gen genome editing techniques. But uh, and it has enormous potential. But along with this potential, it also brings that there are regulatory challenges. There are regulatory challenges for policymakers. There are challenges for uh, um, ethical uh, there and they also think that uh, either this is ethically right or not so the the regulations the limits should be defined we should know that what are the limits we should know that where should we put the limit and the limits should not be crossed we should stop uh, we should see that uh, if there is uh, biohacking we should not uh, we should uh, prevent this is these systems from biohacking positive biohacking or negative but we should be we should prevent this the old policies usually they cannot fit in these new technologies so new policies should be designed to new policies should be introduced into the these old policies we should 
put a balance between innovation and regulation. Innovations are endless, but we need uh, we should we have to put regulations there. And the one very very important point that public should be the people uh, should be educated. They should know that what they are getting. They have all the rights that they, they can get. Uh, they they should know uh, they know that what they are getting and uh, all the information they should know that. So what is the future? Uh, in future, uh, these techniques can be very easy, used to cure genetic diseases, to cure viral diseases. We are um, in a phase of Corona. We know that how important it is to get rid from such diseases. It can be used for to cure cancer. It is already being used in plants, but it's uh, further, it's, uh, we can use it in climate change mitigation, adaptation, in, to increase the yield, to reduce pesticides and antibiotics, and we can enhance the opportunity for synthetic biology. So I'm really thankful to you all to listen that you listen to me and you spare your time. I'm uh, really thankful to uh, uh, Aridex Kush University Directorate of Advanced Studies that they provide me the this uh, opportunity to uh, speak here. And uh, this is my contact. If you uh, need to contact me, thank you very much. Is there any question? And I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Asharias, uh, for a wonderful presentation. It was a latest knowledge in the field of science. Uh, if uh, we have any question, please write down in the chat room or please tell us. We have any question? If any person have a question, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Asha. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Aisha. It was wonderful and uh, uh, well precise uh, your talk. Uh, obviously, this is need of the time. Uh, I have one or two theories in my mind. As this is latest technology and uh, is going to be used in uh, animal plants and human means uh, it has a broad spectrum. Uh, will it work for I think I have some issues. Hello. Yes. Hello? Yes, you have some issues. I want to just know that uh, the problems are monogenic and polygenic in their nature. Okay. Uh, Madam, uh, Dr. Aisha, there is one question in the chat room. Can you tell us more about off-targeting due to genomic instability? Um, Dr. Sir, this is a lot of attention to the off-target effects. Because uh, the off-target effects can avoid them. Until the genome uh, engineering or genetically modified organisms, the uh, mutations or off-target effects were because of that, the success rate was 1%. Tha. Say sometimes there are only a few labs in the world they, they had the mastered that technique. Like in CRISPR technology, there are very less off target effects, but even then, uh, there are um, it has been seen that some off target effects came. So, uh, for that, uh, we the from by sequencing, we can find out different um, 
that the other there these are off target or not uh, but uh, later on in recent years last uh, one or two years they also have uh, perform uh, they have used some different uh, modified uh, now crispr cas jo hai ye already bahut new technique hai lekin ab isme bahut sari modifications bhi aa gayi hain ab aam taur pe off target effects aur iske sath sath ek aur technique jisko kaha jata hai mosaicism jo ki aam taur pe ye hota hai ki jab jis waqt embryo mein transfer kiya jata hai तो कोशिश ये की जाती है कि एम्ब्रियो का जो अपना डीएनए वो रेप्लीकेट ना करे उससे पहले पहले ट्रांसफर कर दिया जाए अगर उसका डीएनए रेप्लीकेट पहले कर जाएगा या वो अपनी कॉपीज बनाना शुरू कर देगा तो दो तरह के जीनोटाइप्स उसमें चले जाते हैं एक जो आप उसमें करना चाह रहे हैं और दूसरा उसका अपना है तो उससे फिर आपको फाइंड आउट करने में मुश्किल होती है तो जहां तक ऑफ टारगेट की बात है दे कैन दे एक तो पहली बात यह है कि एक तो राइट टाइमिंग वेन यू इंजर्ट द डी एन ए at that time in 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 uh, the cells secondly agar aap uh, different modifications hain jinko hum use kar sakte hain uh, ek to donor dna jo hai usko aap use kare then off targets effects are less in case of uh, uh, non homologous jo ki natural system hai usme usme aapko zyada uh, mutations milti hain usme aapko uh, zyada uh, problem milti hai there is one more question बायोटेक्नोलॉजी के शुरू से ही रहे हैं अब एथिकल कंसर्नस को दूर करने के लिए ही रेगुलेशन की जरूरत है ह्यूमन में इसकी परमिशन अभी तक नहीं दी गई है ह्यूमन में इसको यूज uh, करने से पहले uh, एक तो स्पेशली इन दिस ह्यूमन एम्ब्रियो देर इज नो परमिशन देयर लेकिन अगर ह्यूमन बीइंग्स में uh, एक दो जगहों पे इस तरह के एक्सपेरिमेंट्स भी हुए हैं जो लेकिन उसके बाद उसको रोक दिया गया था और उनको uh, उन पर क्रिमिनल चार्जेस लगाए गए उन साइंटिस्ट पे जिन्होंने इसको यूज किया सो देर आर एथिकल कंसर्न दैट्स वाई फॉर्मेशन ऑफ रेगुलेशन इज नेसेसरी लेकिन अगर इट्स इसको देखा जाए तो ये एक ऐसी टेक्निक है जिससे कि आप बहुत सारी डिजीजेस को क्योर कर सकते हैं आप इसको आप इसकी वजह से हेरिडिटी डिजीजेस को क्योर कर सकते हैं आप इसकी वजह से वायरल डिजीजेस कैंसर को क्योर कर सकते हैं जो कि जो कि जिनकी वजह से कोई ना कोई जीन जो है वो कोई ऐसा जीन जो कि जिस जिसको आप जो रिस्पॉन्सिबल है उस डिजीज के कैंसर का या उस डिजीज का तो इसकी अगर देखी जाए एप्लीकेशन तो दे आर ह्यूज लेकिन अगेन एथिकल कंसर्न को डील करने के लिए देर शुड बी रेगुलेशन विच शुड बी मेड बाई पॉलिसी मेकर और विच शुड बी मेड बाई द गवर्नमेंट एंड देन आई एम आई एम श्योर कि इसको अगर यूज किया जाएगा तो इट्स इट विल गिव huge uh, uh, benefit acha madam there is one more question will it work for both monogenic and polygenic diseases um sir iska mujhe thoda sa dekhna padega i think monogenic ke liye to ye hai polygenic ka lekin ye ab dekha ja raha hai ki jo crispr technology mein aap ek जो इसकी मॉडिफिकेशंस नहीं आ रही हैं उसमें आप एक बल, एक नहीं बल्कि कहीं कई जगहों पे एक साथ चेंजेस क्रिएट कर सकते हैं तो आई थिंक सो इट इट इज इट इज आल्सो गुड फॉर पॉलीजेनिक एज वेल एंड अदर क्वेश्चन एंड लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज इज बीएलजी नॉकआउट टेक्निक बेनिफिशियल फॉर लैक्टोज इंटॉलरेंस मोस्टली जो मिल्क की एलर्जी एलर्जी है वो इसी uh, इसी प्रोटीन की वजह से इस प्रोटीन की वजह से होती है लेकिन लेक्टोज इज डिफरेंट थिंग आई डोंट थिंक सो कि ये इसको कवर करेगा लेक्टोज इन टोलरेंस को थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर आयशा रियाज फॉर योर वंडरफुल टॉक साइंटिफिक अपडेटेड नॉलेज टू द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर द रिसर्चर्स एंड द फैकल्टी मेंबर टुडे वी एंडेड आवर 21 a seminar our ds events calendar and the next will be on the 16 of september and dr mohammad rais will be the speaker uh, 
uh, I just want to tell you that Dr. Aisha Riaz did his PhD from UK and now she is uh, on TTS and uh, he, she did many research projects uh, and uh, our many students from different departments, not only from the veterinary science, also zoology and even our uh, plant breeding genetics departments are also taking help from her. Uh, it is great uh, intake in the, our scientist group. I uh, thank you, Dr. Aisha. Uh, thank you so much. Be happy thank and thank you with us for uh, this wonderful uh, seminar on your uh, scientific talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.